Welcome back, Zero K fans, to another exhibition match. This time we're gonna have Dancer versus Kane on Desert Cliffs. As I mentioned before, this should be interesting because Dancer, last time we saw them, showed us how to play defensively. Now I don't know if Dancer is just gonna play like that. They might decide to be a bit more varied, which would be kind of cool too. But hopefully we see something really good and interesting. So versus Kane, who has been playing a lot. They have been playing a lot and also commentating a bit. I haven't seen a lot of commentaries in them since the tournament. But, I don't mean when we were co-commentating, I meant they also did some Epibod stuff of theirs during the tournament when they were playing. That's good too. Anyway, so they've been playing and still continuing their commentary stuff. So this map we've seen a few times, I don't know if I really need to go over it too much. It's pretty much what you see is what you get. You have flanking paths, the center is fairly valuable, though for a shield mirror it's not the most valuable. Not like a spider mirror, or spiders in there somewhere. And typically, as you mentioned before, you're going to see a decent amount of maneuvering through this cliff from both players. This is where the flanking will likely happen. This cliff over here, usually that's just you go there to destroy the economy. Not so much as an approach vector. Anyway, we'll see how it goes. So being that it's a shield bot and mirror, I expect that we're probably going to see a lot around the center. Might see some bandits along the side, but usually shield bot mirrors, like the sort of that thug rogue bandit interaction. Well, Thug, Rogue, Bandit, Felon. Outlaws are useful too, but this is... Outlaws are kind of awkward. Because outlaws are... slow. And... not particularly strong. They aren't the most straightforward riot unit. But Outlaw Thug together, that does do pretty well. But then of course, Rogues deal with that, and then Bandits deal with Rogues, so that can make for an interesting game. I haven't seen a lot of Shield Mirrors in a while though, so the meta probably has changed a bit. Of course, at first it'll just be Bandits. And Kane is being very aggressive, Dancer being much more defensive, which is kind of what I expected. Two workers coming up quickly, building up power as they need, building up lotuses as they need. Nice scouting dirtbag too. Oh, nice! Got right in front of the factory, that's not enough to block it, but it's quite close. In fact, let's double check the pathing on that right now. Yeah, that won't block the factory, the fa units will still be able to get out, but they're kind of stuck along one path. So that was not a bad place for that for that particular dirtbag to die. I think Kane probably was jumping it to try to get right in front of the factory, but that's close enough. Of course, Dancer could just terraform that down. And they probably will. Hopefully for their sake they will. The Dancer doing some really nice reclaim here. Kane? Kane doesn't have that reclaim, do they? I'm trying to think. Dancer has this reclaim here, this rock. And they took some of it, and of course they took, they're going to have the dirt bag available. The dirt bag is hardly any resources. 12 metal. That's nothing. That'll be like two seconds worth of reclaim. But they are... Hmm. Okay, there's the rock for Kane. I mean, it's still something. Dancer still has that as a way of getting slightly ahead in economics, but they are actually not that far ahead. They're about the same place as Kane is, and Kane actually has a better position right now. So Kane starting off very strong, aggressive, good position, has the center very quickly, Dancer does not have the center, and remember the Icy Shell game, Dancer quickly grabbed the center, that was a huge part of that particular strategy. This map, however, they have not done so. Now, like I said, it's not one single overdrivable metal extractor, there's two, they do total five, so it's kind of like that particular game, but I don't think that'll happen again. What I do think will and that instead happen is that Dancer will probably have to expand along the sides. Though, we'll see. Maybe Dancer's going to go for the center. Players I found in this map tend to focus a lot in the center to the detriment of the sides. They don't tend to focus on these. And Kane actually is ahead of that. They've already set up their bandits just in case Dancer decides to expand. Or at least to flank a bit. They know that Dancer is not expanding in that direction. So they know at this point that Dancer has simply not expanded. They, however, are expanding to the northeast, which is good to see. So Kane getting ahead in economy, they have the center, they have a worker in the center, so they could, if they wanted to, once they're confident, set up the metal extractors there. They have the northeast, that's up to them too. They have full knowledge that Dancer is not taking the southwest or southeast. They only have to worry about the fact that there is a long-range shotgun there. That commander there. Siege commander with a shotgun. Not a particularly healthy thing to go up against. That being said, they already have the counter. They have the Thug Rogue setup, or Thug Outlaw Rogue setup. Kane already moving into the mid game pretty quick, just getting past the raider phase. I guess they're fairly confident. I mean, they don't need to. They don't need to raid. Dancer hasn't built up anything. 
At this point, I think Dancer Style is probably going to not be as useful as it was in Icy Shell. We'll see, but a key part of that particular game, and it seems like a key part of the style, is to secure... Like, the key part, and I mentioned during the game, you have to secure a good area first. Now, Dancer does have a lot of reclaim to work with, and economically they're not that far behind, especially with the reclaim they have. So as long as they can keep that cost effective, they should be fine. And they have the rogues, so the thugs aren't going to be much good. And that does mean Kane's rogues are not going to be able to just rip everything apart. Though Dancer is not in a bad position. They're probably going to build up, and then they're just going to go for build up and a burst out. Kane, however, at the same time, they have the northeast, they have the center. They are not taking the northwest yet, but that's just a matter of time. So at this point, Kane, they're ahead for Static Economy. Dancer's relying mostly on this overdrive here. They're relying a bit as well. On, actually, that's kind of how they work. So they're relying on overdrive. They're relying a bit on defenses. They're relying, it seems like, on just having a small enough territory they can easily and cost-effectively defend it. And now finding that the center is completely taken. Convicts can't do much. Of course, the rest of these forces can actually do something, and whether or not they do, we'll see... I mean, it's the risk, of course, being that these units will just go in for a counterattack, and Dance will be totally out of position. That's always the risk with Shieldbot Factory. You gotta be careful when it comes to raiding, unless you have bandits. You have to make sure you're not getting in that out-of-position state. Otherwise, you're just done. I'm not sure what Kane is talking about, but... Maybe they were high while playing this? I don't know. I mean, I know they live in the western side of North America, so... I assume that I generally assume that I'm the only person on the western west coast of North America who is not stoned ever. I suppose that's not necessarily true. I imagine that can't be because there are other people I've met who don't seem to be stoned when I talk to them. But I'm really not sure. And I mean, I've lived here my whole life, but it's just I don't know. Never totally sure sometimes. Here, just everyone's high all the time. The city itself, like sort of a genius Loki. That's just high all the time. Like the actual city of Vancouver itself. Of course, as I'm saying that, it sounds like I myself am high. No, I am not. I am perfectly sober and perfectly clean and all that. I'm just insane. That's all. I just happen to think of weird situations on the fly like that. Because this battle here is kind of roach. I mean, the roaches are doing a de pretty decent job. As roaches do. But... Dancer knows about them, not going to be falling for them anytime soon, so Kane can just go on and continue. They, I mean, they still have to contain. Dancer has not broken out of it yet. They're getting close, and at this point, it's kind of hard to say what to do. They have a good unit count, they just need more. And Kane is in a much better position to get more. Also going for an air switch, that's a first this stream. I haven't seen an air switch from any of the games I've cast. should point out that the games I cast typically are quite recent. This one actually was played yesterday. And the other two were played over the course of the last week. So... Air Start, I mean, the fact that Air Start, or rather Air Switch, Air Start was almost never popular on maps like this, but Air Switch has not been popular, that has been showing. I mean, even Gunship, Gunship has not happened. This is the first Factory Switch I've seen today in the replays I've cast. So that was interesting. Probably not actually representative, but still. We do have a Thunderbird coming in, which, great move. That's exactly what Kane needs to do. Stun out all the shields, and then just rush in and finish them off. Dancer going for level 5 Commander. Well, presumably. Level 4 so far, level 5 pretty soon. Oh, Standoff Commander, that's what it's called now. Used to be Bombard Commander and then Siege Commander. And... Yeah, the Commander names change without really being that obvious about it. At any rate, I don't really care, I'm not too concerned. What I am concerned about is the fact that it has the Pillager weapon. On top of the rocket, no, the shotgun and assault cannon and plasma, wow. That is... A Strider class commander right there. And that's actually what... That is exactly what Dancer needs to break out of this. Now, of course, the problem is that Kane has exactly what they need to keep them contained. Where has that Thunderbird gone, by the way? Or the Stiletto, rather. Oh, the Stiletto's just landed over here. That is alive, right? Yeah, it's just landed. Because Kane... I agree with this, actually. In fact... I would kind of recommend, in general, this isn't a bad idea. The only risk of doing this is if you get raided out and anti-ground units come in, but I'm pretty sure that your air units will fly into the sky as soon as that happens. But yeah, this means that they're harder to pick up on radar. 
Because the problem, of course, being that Dancer, if they have radar even in the center of the map, now this is Kane's vision, but if they have radar in roughly the center of the map, it's going to be easier to see air units because if they're flying around, they'll fly in and out of radar just as they're in a holding pattern. Whereas if they're on the ground, they're stationary. So Kane has total control over where they are and doesn't have to worry about them flying into Go Dancer's vision or into radar range. Just as they're randomly flying around. And drones as part of the level 5... No, level 4, really? Oh yeah, I guess it was. Okay. You don't really see a lot of drones very often. I mean, they're not useless, but they're just not super common. However, in this particular case, those outlaws are causing all sorts of pain. And, of course, the dirtbags coming in. Dancer with the dirtbags. They're practically pulling in Orphelius here. This is Orphelius' thing to do, is build loads of dirtbags, but I can see why. Block off the choke point, prevent one more avenue of entry. I mean, Dancer's playing defensive here, so they kind of need to do that. And here comes the comm killers. And that will, in fact, be a comm death. Down it goes. Level 5 commander taking on all the units in the process. That is game. There is a spider switch, though, so maybe it's not quite game, but that is pretty much game. That was the vast majority... It, Buy almost 5,000 metal invested in that one commander. Dancer's army value just went down. And on top of that, all the comics, all the thugs, and everything. Other than these dirtbags and fleas, that was the entire army. Now, this is one of the reasons why it's a bad idea to have this just sort of lying around. That's where the holding pattern is handy. But, for the most part, I kind of agree. Having them land as soon as they get out of the factory is a great way to avoid getting detected early. Because I've seen so many games where... You see ravens detected early, and as a result, they go in too early. There's like two or three of them when they need to... There needs to be five or six, especially if you know it's defended. Four if you know it's not defended. But they get spotted at two or three, and then you just kind of have to go in before your opponent builds up those defenses. Assuming they haven't already, just in advance, just on a read. So, I totally understand that, and I agree with it. I think people should do that more often. That was a really good idea, Kane. Like I said, I can see why you might want to not want to do that in all circumstances, especially if the Raven's just sort of randomly hanging out in the center of the map. Typically, that's a bad idea. And an Athena coming in? Okay, I don't even understand anymore what's going on. Why is Dancer going for an Athena when they have... Okay, 28 metal, that's not bad, but still. Bandits bearing down that are going to kill the Athena? No, they are not going to kill the Athena. Going for the Convicts instead. Bit more of a useful target. I can definitely relate with that. But with Bandits of the Rome, well, that's not going to work. Still, that's... I don't know, Dancer does have the defender's advantage. The Kane just doesn't have quite the unit count. I'm a bit surprised, though, why are they not attacking with these? These are mostly built up, there's not much anti-air. They could hit one Metal Extractor each, and that would be enough. That would just seal it. Like, if Dancer ran out of Metal Extractors and lost his Caretaker, I mean, Kane could just scout out with one, and the rest of them could split between all the Metal Extractors and Caretakers, and that would be it. Game over. Dancer would have no economy to work with, at which point Kane would just rush in. I mean, Kane already has the military advantage. And they already know Dancer has not expanded much. So Kane could just go in and just tear everything apart. And they really should. Like, really, they... It's just... They're patient... Okay, I shouldn't say they really should. It's a matter of patience, and they're not being unwise by holding off. But they can rush in. In this particular circumstance, they have enough of an army, they can just go in and probably kill... But they obviously need to go in all at once, and now we see the bombers not moving out. Nope, still in a holding pattern. Come on. Kane moving in for a missile silo. I guess they expect the Dancer has a bit more of a defense than they actually do. I mean, I'm not having defense ranges on, so with defense ranges, we can clearly see that Dancer's defense is actually kind of scary. So I can understand that. However, Kane just continuing that contain. They really want to make sure that they're not going to lose by attacking. They are... Like I said, probably not unwise to do so, but... The, oh, that commander's getting resurrected, because... Well, when you have a 4,400 metal commander, you're gonna resurrect it. That's just something you're gonna do. I think that's obviously why the Athena was built, but... So that doesn't come up very often. But, the Athena goes down, because, of course... Actually, wait, no, not of course. Athenas are a gunship? I didn't realize Athenas were counters as a gunship. Apparently they are. Because planes cannot be bombed out by that. Where did the Athena wreckage go, anyway? Oh yeah, there it is. That's... Okay, it doesn't say, but apparently Athena's count as a gunship, because Ravens cannot bomb other planes, they can only bomb gunships. There was a bit of a problem when that first got introduced, where they could basically win in an anti-air fight. Like, Ravens were the best counter to other Ravens. 
And Raven Monoculture is one of those perennial balance issues that has existed in Zero-K. The current change has actually been pretty good. There haven't been very many Ravens, because they're just too slow for most things. But otherwise, yeah, perennial balance issue. But we don't see any additional Athenas coming out yet. I think that Dancer is not going to worry about that. Focusing instead on the Felons and getting burnt. No, that's, that is a Shockley, I believe. Well, that's an Aeos coming in here, but I think that's a Shockley first. Yep, that's exactly what's happening. On the Commander, just in case, I guess. Not really doing much good, though. Not actually getting rid of the Commander in any meaningful way. Not sure why they aimed at the Commander Corpse, if they were trying to hit the Factory or trying to hit something near there. Bit of an odd choice. But yeah, going with the Shockley. Now that they know where the army is, though, that Shockley is going to be considerably more useful. Especially if it does, in fact, hit and deal enough damage to get through the shields. Those felons will be dead. But at this point, Kane actually not at that big of a military advantage. Focusing primarily on building up nukes, well, Shockley's and Aeos's. Not focused on building up much else. Oh, Infernos, never mind. Shockley's, Infernos, and a couple Aeos as well, because Infernos are the go-to for this factory. Sorry, not factories. Well, okay, you know, it counts as one, but... It's the go-to for the missile silo. That's the go-to missile. Get fire. Burn everything. Although, admittedly, it's shield army, that's actually not that useful. The Shockley, however, that's very useful. And, in fact, knocks out a couple of felons. That's... Kane could attack right now. I'm not kidding. Kane has a 40-second window to attack this particular group. There's only one felon there. And, okay, Kane figures that out pretty quick. And just in case... It doesn't actually hit any of the other felons, though. But, yeah, just in case... Dar disarm on top of that. Doesn't really do much good. But yeah, those two felons are dead. And it's definitely worth getting rid of for the amount of crowd control power they would have had had they been alive. 14 seconds left on the felon. Focusing on the living felon as I... Well, okay, pushes it back at least. Splits them up, meaning that that was a good move. Kane getting that center once again. Getting the contain. Continuing that contain they've had this entire game. And what a contain it is. They have the entire map. Everything. Now, where's that stiletto? Is that stiletto? Th oh, sorry. Thunderbird. It is Thunderbird now. That's, that was right in the first place. Stiletto's the old name. But Dancer's Reclaim Core is still being a problem. And here's the Athena. Now, okay, I was about to say, another Athena would be very useful because that would speed up the resurrection process. Because right now, it looks like it's going to take somewhere on the order of five minutes. And that's excessive. Nice! Nice placement of the Inferno there. Gets rid of the Metal Extractor. Might get rid of the Caretaker. The next one will definitely get rid of it. Doesn't hit the Athena, though. Just slightly unlucky, but aiming for the Metal Extractors, of course. That's what you want to go for first. I mean, at this point, the Caretaker is basically... Well, it's dead. <laughs> Desperately trying to assist the factory before it dies. And that Felon can't even build up just for being burned the entire time. And Shockley... Is that Shockley and Inferno coming in? Nope, double Shockley. Finish off that army, which honestly doesn't even need to be hit. Okay, got the Felon. Got the Felon, that's all we need. Kane has this game in the bag. If they didn't before, they certainly do now. Nice surround the Stinger, nice surround the Felon, and that is... that's it. With Dancer's base burning down and the Felon basically gone, thanks to the Infernos. And that and the Shockleys. No one really uses Shockleys. Like, Quakes and Shockleys are the least used missiles. I've... I can't remember the last time I saw a Quake. It would actually be useful in this matchup due to all the dirtbags, but Shockleys... What? Why is Dancer asking that question? Of course turrets show range before you build them. That wouldn't make sense otherwise. Oh, I see. Okay, that's a bug. That's something that's worth pointing out. Possibly make an issue for that. That Maybe that's an engine bug. That the range is not properly calculated for the height in pre-build. Worth noting, actually. That's really good. That's a good thing to note. And once again, the Athena goes down 25%. Wow. Like I said, this is where the second Athena really comes in. Okay, the Athena doesn't quite go down, but this is game. There's no way Kane's bandits will not tear everything apart here. Even with the Reclaim, even with the Reclaim core, this is not going to work. It's just... Kane is too much. With 10 metal, it's not enough. These Athenas already have, like, 10-ish build power. Sorry, 7.5. 10-ish. No, it's, it's about 10. 7.5 is like 10, right? And now at this point, finally desperate, but at the end of the game, reclaim the commander because that's all they can do with it. But nope, too late. That was game. Kane took it. They had the entire, like, start to finish. 
Dancer's defensive strategy works fine. If there's enough metal that they can get away with it. Like if they had, if they had gone from the center and taken the southwest and this southeast metal extractor and then set up a defensive line on that, that probably would have worked better. But as it was, they just didn't have the economy in this map, and especially if they'd taken the center. Actually, if they'd moved to the center and taken that first, that would have helped a lot as well. They'd taken the entire west side, I think southwest corner, and then build up from there. That would have worked like the Icy Shell game. But that was an example of where that strategy kind of falls apart. A little unfortunate to see that, but yeah, it happens. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed that. That is going to be it for me tonight. So thank you all for watching, and have a good night, everyone.